Well, I don't know where to start. Um, so I always take um, like one or two boards every year that I wrote some special stuff on and I keep those boards. And I think this is, oh, should be cleaner, but this may be the first board that I was ever um, given. And this is one of Rosignol's first 50 boards to come in, into the country. Um, I went to a race and I um, was on a beat up board. I borrowed a board. I, it was my first race. I won the race and the guy's like, keep it man. And, um, and I kept it and that started a 19 year relationship with Rosigno. This, I can't remember if this is my first or second split board. But this guy um, got the, it's actually pretty darn well done. I'm trying to find the like original Jones. Here we go. The first Jones split. So yeah, I shot um, deeper on this. Oh, here's the board I rode shangri on. This I rode the Grand and Denali on. This was a special board. Well, let's start at the beginning with the flagship, maybe. All right, yeah, so Jones flagship, this is um, what the company is built on, which is a you know hard charging free ride board that is really a direct lineage from what I was doing at Rosignol. Rode for them for 19 years, had my own line of boards for at least 10 of that, and just slowly been evolving it. And this, yeah, this, board has a lot of meaning to me because this thing is when I got on this, I was like, wow, we got something here. Um, ironically, this wood top sheet, we've come full circle on. Um, we have played with a bunch of different materials, but we realized the properties of this wood on how the board rides is, plays a way bigger factor than we um, previously thought. And that only took about 50 test boards to figure that out. I gotta go, I guess we can go, let's go into the hovercraft world. Um, so it's funny when this board, you know, I came in and I, I wanted to make a board where I compressed, um, as much as I could into a small shape. So this has a really long side cut, uh, basically has a race tail, similar to this board over here, and then a blunted nose. So this was a 156, and the fact that we were riding POW on a 156, um, previously that would have been would have been on like a 165. And um, Dmitry Milanovic got a hold of this board, and he um, actually, did a volume test on this compared to a traditional snowboard and he came back to me um, and was like this has the float of a 167 I think he said of a traditional narrow board um, and all I remember about this board is this thing showed up and it snowed for like 10 days straight and it was a pow fest and then over time I started riding it on hard snow and I'm like wow this thing is insane on hard snow and now, um, from the get-go, we always called it, don't call me a POW board, POW board. And now people know it as just, it's really a all conditions uh, free ride board. Killer for touring, um, which is why I got this board here, very special board to me. I rode, this is the um, Ultracraft. This is our first foray of going really deep into uh, lightweight construction. And this thing, I rode Denali on this and I rode the Grand on it. And it's this shape as we have these diehard hovercrafters um, is optimal for touring because you have this bigger board it, um, but stuffed into a smaller shape, super maneuverable for kick turns and, and then just handles all conditions. Um, so this is, yeah, this board continues to I think my 
you, it wouldn't surprise me that um, I end up on a 152 really lightweight hovercraft and am just running around skin tracks when I'm 75 years old on a 152 super lightweight hovercraft. <laughs> this this is um, the original solution and this was one of the reasons why I started the company uh, because at this point, most of my snowboarding was split boarding. I was sick of splitting, you know, solid boards. I knew there was room for improvement with split boards. It, so that's why I, you know, one of the main things and, and why I call this board the solution. And this is a first gen solution. Um, the, yeah, this one shot, shot deeper on this. I love my Coombs, Doug Coombs sticker and C.R. Johnson sticker. I remember, man, because it, you know, I was like, everything was new to me, Alpine starts and stuff, and it was intense hiking these lines um, on this board. And I had the Coombs sticker, I'd look down all the time, and you know, especially on those dark starts, and um, it's like, man, Doug would be psyched to see us out here. And sadly, C.R. passed um, while we were filming that movie. So, honored him with that. Uh, carbon flagship. This is, when it comes to really serious riding, um, this is the board. I don't even have to think about it. And which is why I brought this board to the Himalaya and rode Shangri-La on this thing. And which um, was definitely the most technical line that I'd ever ridden. And, and an example of um, it's like, yeah, we got these boards that work really well in POW, but we really care about how they feel between here and here, because that's when you ride nice. Um, I mean, I was literally like on the edge, clinging to the side of a mountain, um, and that's why we have this, this uh, traction tech. Uh, it's, you never feel it unless you need it, and I sure as heck needed it that day. <laughs> So yeah, this is an example of kind of how we get to the boards that we get to. And um, I guess with me, I'm always uh, looking at ways to take like mundane average conditions at a mountain that I've been riding for 20 years and make it magical. Uh, so that's, you know, kind of that, that zero to one star day into a five star day because you nailed your equipment and it's just, um, feels amazing and, and like you have these new feelings on a mountain that you've been riding for a long time and that's why all these boards have different shapes and what have you and um, as I say to my kids the best person on the mountain is the one having the most fun and it's why we call these instruments of stoke and hopefully uh, they help you have a good time out there on all the days not just the perfect pow day.